And included in the illegal gambling bust was Officer Jones of the Port Charles Police Department. I can explain why I was there, sir. Well, you'd better, because you're facing dismissal from the police force. Keeping banker's hours, Mr. Lavery. My time is my own. Besides, I work late at the club. So I understand. The answer is no. The answer to what? You have a look in your face I recognize only too well. You're about to ask the impossible. And the answer is no. You can't say no to Mr. B and what he wants. I can't. If you do, you're a dead man. When the choice of living or dying depends on saying yes, it does simplify matters, doesn't it? Come on, Duke, you love life, especially in such plush surroundings. Don't deny it. I won't. To business, then? To business. Good. Mr. B is bringing in more cash from Monte Carlo, which creates a crisis for the operation. What to do with the extra money you'll be skimming? Well, that's it. I take it you would like me to launder this extra money through Port Charles? Yes. You will handle the increase. Things are tight here, Damon. I don't think we can launder that much money. Well, Tessie's arriving tomorrow with the cash. Come on, man. Tomorrow is much too soon. I'm still in charge of this operation in Port Charles, and I'm telling you that it is impossible. When you're telling me, you're telling Mr. B, and you know it's of no use to argue the point with him. Is Tessie en route? Yes. Well, this isn't an argument, but I would like you to point out to Mr. B that Tessie is becoming a danger to this operation. We're aware of that. We're going to be making some changes which will allow you to handle the increased volume of money. What changes? Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I need your signature on this before the banks close. What else? Um, there's a few reports that really need your attention right away. Well, this looks like a good opportunity for me to make a couple of phone calls. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, it's quite all right. First things first. I'll see you later, Duke. I held off coming in here as long as I could. No, I told you to come out. It was important. Let me see what you want me to sign here. <clears throat> um, also, I'd like to make a deposit of this money. I'm sure you don't want this much cash on hand. No, I certainly don't. Let me see what day it is. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned the date. Why? Because Robin's going to be coming back from Australia in a couple of days. Oh, that should make Anna Devane a very happy woman. Yeah. I just hope. What do you hope? Oh, no, it's not. It's a problem I shouldn't really concern you with. Go on, I can handle it. Well, Frisco and I are just crazy about Robin. I just hope that when she comes back that we can be friends with Anna again. Anna, I told you about the first time I was approached about the poker game, right? Yes. And we decided that they invited a rookie cop to play cards for a reason. That I thought I would be set up to win a lot of money. Yes. Now, didn't we all feel that this was a link to the crime on the waterfront? You disobeyed orders, Frisco. You were told to report back to us if you were contacted about another poker game. We were going to assign a professional detective to take care of it. Your duty was to guard the station house. Well, that was just a punishment. I beg you. And besides, I got Eric to cover my post while I was gone. Yes, you got Eric to take your duty. Right. Well, you thought you had the authority to reassign cops. I felt it was an emergency. So you took things into your own hands. Well, there wasn't time. Now, this is a major link to my investigation. Your investigation? And it's right in the palm of my hands. Let me just correct you here, Frisco. This is not your investigation. This is not a one-man or a one-woman operation. You keep trying to go solo, Frisco. How many times do we have to drum it out of your head? How many times did I tell you at the academy? Police work is teamwork. It is teamwork. absolutely essential. Right. I think we've discussed this long enough. You have a three-week suspension without pay. A suspension? Yes. Without pay? Yes. All right, Joe, I think he's got it. Turn in your badge and your gun. You disobeyed orders, Frisco. You're dismissed.
I don't want you to sound like it at all, Tony. Buzz, replacing your cranial plate is major surgery, and we can't move on it until Dr. Stanton makes a recommendation. Right. You have to have the very best surgeon, Buzz. And that's why he wants to find the best specialist on the East Coast. I, this is quite a blow to me, you know that? I was hoping to get this over with. We'll just have a little patience. I, I've had several talks with Dr. Lincoln over the past couple of days. He agrees I'm about ready to become an outpatient. I foolishly had the idea that... With Alan gone, I, I, might, I might be needed at General. You are needed there. Just don't push it. We want you full time. What, not at all? I didn't say oh, that. Buzz, please, just listen Anna, to Tony. You agree with him? Well, I, I'm not a doctor or anything, but I, I don't have to be to know that you shouldn't push yourself until after your final operation. I mean, Buzz, you are getting better here, and this is all we care about. I don't see it as, as getting better if I can't function of what use am I to anyone. I can't stand idleness. I never could. Buzz, what you're accomplishing here is not idleness. This is a fully operational rehabilitation center, and you are doing well. And let's just not take any risk right now, okay? I mean, if you're, if you're worried about having free time on your hands, Robin's going to be home soon. Yeah, it'll be wonderful to see her again. I hope she had a good time with Robert. Yes, she did. And she's going to need her godfathers. Not this one. Oh, this has nothing to do with how much I love oh. Robin. I just, I do not want her to see me in a, a rehabilitation place. It was bad enough for my own daughter. Well, I have a feeling that you're wrong. Yes, I know you're wrong. Robin is too little to understand. No. If it's explained to her, you will be surprised what she understands. Well, yeah, you understand this. I'm not sure that I want her to understand my situation. My therapy group. You have to excuse me. I know. Well, there, there has to be something that we can do. Not till after the final surgery. And you don't know when that's going to be? It depends on when Stanton finds a specialist. What is it, Anna? <gasps> it's, it's, it's Robin. You know, when she comes back, she's going to be faced with a, a whole different team of godfathers, it seems. What about Sean? Well, you know, he's, he's getting himself into trouble. I'm sorry to hear about that, but, you know, Robin's still got Frisco. I really didn't want to... I don't want to say this, but... Your brother's been a, a big disappointment to me. What do you mean? I think I better let Frisco explain it. Do you suppose I have a bit of Welsh in me, too? I had this hunch to call you. I'm so glad you did. You know, I'm feeling a great deal of annoyance at myself, plus some self-pity and uh, complete isolation from my friends and people that I love. How's that? Terrible. I know. I had a run-in with Frisco earlier on. I had to suspend him. You did what? Yeah, he was caught in a poker game when he should have been on duty. Oh, Anna, I'm sorry. Well, he swears that he was set up, but, uh, you know, there's no proof. Was he sure of that? Yes. And I also had a bad time with Buzz. The day's not even over yet. Tell you what. How about meeting me for dinner tonight at the pub? Then we'll concentrate only on the positive things in life. Positive things? That sounds great. About seven-ish. Yes. You know, my morale's beginning to look up already. Well, you keep on it. And I'll see you later. Okay. Yeah. Judy calls? Uh, yes. Goodbye. Yeah, what is it? I got a report on the quarter main investigation. What do you have? A problem. Uh-huh. Well? It's a good day for it. Go ahead. Seems I can't find a single shred of any parachute ripped up that's around the plane debris or in the uh, rabbits where they found Alan Quartermain's helmet and his wallet. So Alan didn't bail out? Well, they can't find any material, they can't find a cord. It's very possible he was in the plane when it crashed. Yeah, otherwise he would have found at least a trace of the parachute. Okay. So if Alan didn't have time to jump before the plane crashed, wouldn't they have found the parachute in the wreckage? Which, as we know now, it wasn't. So Alan didn't have a parachute with him? It wasn't in the locker either. Oh. What's that? It's a cup. It was found on the plane with the chemical substances. I had it put back together again. Hmm. Pretty distinctive. 
Very. Looks like it's uh, antique pottery. It's Mexican. You know that for a fact? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can't have too many of those in Port Charles. No, I think I know who it belongs to. It's part of a set. Well, that's a pretty hard lead. I saw it in a set in Sean Donnelly's penthouse. Donnelly? What is it? Well, you know, I don't pay attention to anonymous phone tips usually. Well, neither do I, but did you have one? Yeah. Somebody called and said they had found a parachute in one of the warehouses on the docks. And you don't want to tell me which warehouse? It's an old friend. Sean Donnelly's right. Okay. Look, I, I don't usually yes, pay attention to the anonymous Yes, I know, I know. All right. I want a search warrant, please, for Sean's penthouse and the warehouse. I can't let this go on any longer. I'm on my way. Pretty rough day, huh, Chief? Mm. Yes. Thank you for being so understanding. It's the second time I've had a hard decision concerning a friend. You damn near blew our whole operation, Tuffy. What are you talking about? What did I do? You used your key to come in the back door of this building and you were spotted by Frisco Jones. I was? You were. Now, from now on, we have to keep up an appearance of doing union business and union business only. And for your information, I've already changed the lock so you can throw away your key. Okay. Okay, I'll get rid of it. We can't make mistakes in this business. I guess it's another scam. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. Look, you're through with me, and I, uh, I gotta go make arrangements for Tessie's docking tomorrow. You've been talking to Damon? Well, we speak now and then, yeah. I've already told them we can't handle that much cash here in Port Charles. It's a tough man to say no to, you know? Oh, I'll say no all the way to the top if I have to. Because I intend to be out of this phase of the operation in four weeks. Still sore me? No. I'm sore about something else. Port Charles is my city. At least for the next four weeks. I don't want you to forget that. I won't, boys. See you later. Sir, How are you, Tuffy? Damn it, Damon. You owe me an explanation. About what? For setting Frisco Jones up in that poker game. I know you were at the bottom of that. I don't think I owe you an explanation about anything. Port Charles is still my town. You can't take action like that without first consulting me. There is no consulting where Mr. B is concerned. You ought to know that by now. He learned that the rookie cop was a threat to our laundering operation. He ordered something done about it. I did it. And now the rookie's off the police force for three weeks. That uh, suspension probably saved his life. Oh, so now you think he's off our backs? Well, for at least three weeks. Just the same, I'd keep an eye on him. Ought to be easy enough for you to do. His wife works for you. I presume she likes you. Probably even trusts you. Now, do you suppose we could finish the conversation we were having when she interrupted us this morning? Yes. I want to know more about these plans. Well, tomorrow will be Tessie's last run. Go on. At the end of this week, we shift to plan B so we can double the intake of the cash. I already told you it's too fast. Uh, you can tell me, but it won't change anything. Hmm? The schedules have been set up. The machines for transport will be here by the end of the week. I've already had Tuffy speak to Tessie and tell her that we're not going to be using her boat for the drop-offs anymore, at least for a while, because the plan got too hot. You're making a mistake. I would suggest that you don't let your opinions reach the ears of Mr. B. You've got to tell Mr. B that Port Charles is too small to handle that kind of cash. And if you don't tell him, I certainly will. And his answer will be, yes, it can. And then, where will you be? Oh, well, let me tell you where I'll be. If I get caught, I'll be in jail. We have the best lawyers in the country. And if I go to jail, this whole operation will then crumble. And if I'm in jail, You'll all be in jail. Not if you keep your mouth shut and follow orders. Hmm? Mr. B hasn't done so badly by you so far, has he? Your back's up against the wall, Lavery. You don't have any choice.
I want more information. You'll get it when the time is right. No, I want to know what are these machines you're bringing in. You'll find out when they get here. That's not good enough. I have to know the details. We found a new way to bring the money in a safer way, by land instead of by boat. Oh, this is plan B that's on the computer sheets. Yeah, exactly. Nothing's changed, Duke. It's just a, a new way to handle the money that's being received. Look, I've waited as long as I can for you to make up your mind. Now, are all systems go? Oh, do I have a choice? You want to put your head in a noose with the boss? It's your funeral. We'll try to handle the first shipment. I knew you'd see things our way. There is one condition. Name it. No more rough stuff. What happened to Frisco Jones? It won't have to happen again. If the rookie's smart. I'm gonna hold you to that, Damon. You go back in your work one more time, and all bets are off. I'll have more information for you by tomorrow on the, uh, the new plan. As a matter of fact, I think I'll make a phone call now to set up the meeting in the morning, if you don't mind. I'm sorry I couldn't arrange any bagpipes, but I do have music. What is all this? Well, inside the hamper is what I hope, delicious supper. That's for us? Yes. I've already arranged dinner here. Well, you're not the only one that can spring surprises. Mm. This is very tempting. Yes, I hoped it would be. You are very tempting. <laughs> I hope that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Bumble. Chief Devane. Hi. If you were um, hoping to discuss business at the moment, I'm afraid that's out of the question. Maybe we have to hit the road. As a law-abiding citizen, I must do what the police chief tells me. Oh, that's right. always. Nice to see you, Mr. And you? Be on guard, Damon. You see what the long arm of the law can do. music. You remember it? Uh-huh. I was playing the first time we went at the policeman's ball. I had a tape made of it. A final touch, huh? Oh, I hope not. Lovers and friends, Anna. That's the way it should be. I'll always be your friend, no matter what. My friends. I'm in so much trouble right now. More? Well, you know what happened with Frisco. Yeah, from what I understand, she's on some difficulties too. Yes. So that leaves your friend, Buzz? He's on a downswing right now. You know, they can be really terrible. What am I going to tell Robin when she comes back and she finds all her godfathers have got all these problems and I'm instrumental in those problems? You know, how do I explain that to her? From what I know of Robin, the most important person in her life is you. And her father. You are here. Pretty soon she'll be here. She's not only bright, Anna, she's intuitive. I think she'll understand your position. I hope so. I know she's going to be upset there. What are you doing? I think it's about time we get back to our music. Mm -hmm. There's no trouble there. Thanks for making me believe in someone again.
Well, you're finally somewhere where you're supposed to be. Just what is that supposed to mean? I tried calling you all night about the meeting this morning. You weren't home. Not that it's any of your business, but I was out to... With the lovely Anna Devane, huh? Yeah, remember I saw you two leave the pub together? And just for the record, everything you do is my business. What I do in my own time is none of your concern, Damon. What is this meeting about? Well, two visitors from out of town are dropping by to put the next step of our plan into operation. Who are they? Mr. Philip Wilder and a Mr. David Marlowe. Well, I've never heard of them. What do they do? You know, I think you're hanging around too much with Chief Devane. You're beginning to sound like a police detective. This is still my operation, Damon. I don't take too kindly to strangers coming in here telling me what to do. Well, these men are experts in their field. They'll perform tasks that your union flunkies couldn't begin to approximate. You still haven't answered my question. Mr. Wilder is a computer expert. Mr. Marlowe is a very highly placed accountant in our operation. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. I know how to operate my own computer, and I don't need an accountant. I've already employed a very competent young woman who handles my books. You know, you know damn well that these men are here on Mr. B's orders. And nothing gives you greater pleasure than to see them carried out and also to rub my face in it. You're loose change when it comes to the size of our operation here, Duke. If I were you, I wouldn't press my luck. Well, can you tell me anything about this new operation? I don't know that much about it, actually. Philip and David will fill us in when they get here. Uh, I do know that the code name for the operation is Tumble Dry. Meet both of you. I've heard a lot about you, or should I say about your mysterious plans. There's nothing mysterious about it, Mr. Lavery. It's just our operation has become too large to be handled in the simplistic way that's been handled here previously. We've always managed to do the job. Mm. Not without some very close calls. Yes, but Mr. Lavery is right. All in all, the laundering operation has been very successful. And because of that success, a decision has been made to enlarge the operation. We're talking large amounts of cash, which couldn't possibly be handled through the one system you're currently using. And that's where Tumble Dry comes in. That's right. Tumble Dry is the computer file name for the new operation. I'll be reformatting your computer, Mr. Lavery. All of the Mr. B information will now be hidden in the hard disk section of your computer. Why is that? It's safer practice than storing the information on floppy disks. We wouldn't want your girlfriend to use one for a coaster. That'd be very embarrassing for you, Duke. Hmm. What about the access code? It's been changed to laundry. That file will store all of the Mr. B business in separate subdirectories. Tumble Dry will be one of those subdirectories along with related subjects such as the Fisherman's Wharf Project and the Phony Union Pension Fund. And these subdirectories will be coded in the same way that we've coded the Tumble Dry file. And you're sure that this information will be safe in the computer? The only part of the information that an untrained user could access would be the display directory under the laundry category. You need the access word laundry to pull up the Tumble Dry file. You still haven't told me how this Tumble Dry operation will work. We plan to transfer the money in laundry machines. The machines will be delivered by truck. And we'll still use Port Charles as our base of operation. You hold it right there. It's going to look very suspicious if I have laundry machines turning over my doorstep twice a week, isn't it? We've taken that into account, Mr. Lavery, and we've made adequate arrangements. All deliveries and pickups will be made to the ADZ warehouse across the alley from you. Which is close enough to transfer the money into your safe without alerting anyone's suspicions. Sounds like you've thought of everything. Almost everything. Port Charles is still my city. I'll decide what's going to work. Believe me, Mr. Lavery, our plan is foolproof. If you don't mind, I'll be the judge of that. I plan to take a closer look at your plan before I decide to endorse it. I think maybe you're overestimating your importance to our operation, Duke. I'm paid to make sure that the Port Charles plan goes ahead without a hitch. It's not going to be much good to anyone if I'm arrested for laundering large sums of money now, is it? Well, if Port Charles really is your town, then you'll be able to see to it that that doesn't happen, won't you? Jesse, fellas, I'll take care of her. I'll uh, pick up her laundry. And she'll be out of town before you know it. Your confidence is inspiring, Tuffy, but we have a new way of handling the drop-offs. Oh. It's called uh, tumble dry. The code word for the entire operation is laundry. 
Oh, excuse me, Mr. Mabry, I, I did knock. What is it, Felicia? My computer is down. I was wondering if I could use yours to make the deposit entries. Of course, that's fine, Lost, but can't wait till after this meeting? Of course. Okay. Who's she? That's Felicia. She handles my books. Did she hear you give out the access word? No, I doubt it, but if she did, she wouldn't understand what it meant. She's married to a cop named Frisco Jones. Yes, that's right. You better make damn sure she didn't hear anything. The last thing we want to do is give Officer Jones more information. Don't worry about Felicia. I can take care of my own employees. If you have any doubts about her, she'll have to be dealt with. Jenny, I saw your piece on Duke Lavery. You did a fine job. You really got to the core of that man. Thank you. Uh, who in the world is this Duke Lavery I keep hearing about? Is he a new man in town? Mm, he's been here about six months. Yes, Duke's a successful businessman and a concerned citizen. I mean, he's involved himself in a lot of civic issues. He's mm. also very good looking and single. Mm. Sounds like quite a catch. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Felicia, I've been meaning to uh, talk to you about Frisco's suspension from the police force. Well, you heard about it. Yes, Anna told me. She was very upset about it. And so was my husband. I'm very sorry the whole thing came down to his being suspended. Is there anything I can do? Well, that's all right. I appreciate the offer. I'm sure Frisco and Anna will resolve their differences before too much longer. I'm just trying to stay out of the whole thing. Well, I take it you think I should follow your lead. I would never presume to tell my boss what to do. Hmm. I wish most of my employees were as, as thoughtful as that. Did you have trouble at the meeting? You overheard? Uh, no, I walked into the room and everybody clammed up. I just figured things weren't going very well. Very perceptive of you, Felicia. Um, I've been meaning to ask you about Terry O'Connor. Did, did you like her singing? Ah, uh, yes, uh, I have to admit, Terry has a great deal of talent. Well, could you consider her for one of your nightclubs? Oh, I'll consider it, Felicia, but my advice to Terry is that perhaps she gets a greater repertoire together. If she's going to perform in a nightclub, she can do it just with a few songs that she's written herself. Okay, I'll tell her about it. Why don't you maybe ask Frisco to help her put her act together? Well, now that he has some free time on his hands, Perhaps he can show Terry the ropes. Yeah, well, I'll mention it to him, but he's so upset about being suspended, I don't think he wants to concentrate on anything else. Oh, just, you know, you shouldn't be down here on the docks like this. What are you talking about? I've been walking the docks since I was a kid. Yeah, well, those days are gone. Right now, the boss doesn't want you to show your face around here until you leave for Atlantic City, but he doesn't want you back here in Port Charles. I sure would like to know what the hell is going on around here. I was promised job security, and here I am being hustled out of town. Jesse, Operation Tumble Dry is only temporary. The boy says we're going to be back to the usual operations just as soon as the heat cools off. Why is it called Tumble Dry? I've said too much already. Well, it's simply better now. You know what I mean. I'm sick of being treated like an outsider. It's for your own protection. And you think of it that way, Jesse. A little retirement protection. Now, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday, August 5th, 11.30 a.m. Operations changed. New name, Tumble Dry. Not bad. Listen, I, uh, sorry to hear about your bad luck. Oh, yeah. Well, it's nothing losing to sleep over. I'll be, be back on the job in a few days. Yeah. You need anything? Money or anything? Oh, no. No, thanks. I'm fine. Okay. Well, listen, don't hesitate to ask. You know, I mean, we waterfront people. We take care of our own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Listen, I thought I'd see you at the game last week, uh, seeing as you were my original contact. Yeah, well, uh, I was going to make it, but I was out of town, you know? Uh, 
I uh, thought I'd be back in an hour or so, you know. <laughs> now, now, I missed the connecting flight. You know how airports are. I missed the flight, so I stayed over a couple of days. I just got back about an hour ago. Right. Well, it's good to see you. Listen, yeah. uh, <clears throat> any more games coming up? Hey, I'll talk to the guys. I'll let you know what happens. That'd be great. Take it easy. Tuesday, August 5th, 2.30 p.m. I just caught Tuffy in another lie. I know he's involved in setting me up. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, no, no, I'm gonna be working uh, here at the penthouse for the rest of the afternoon. Yeah, just make sure to put all the important calls through to me here, right? Okay, thanks, yeah. This was a friendly call, but it looks as if it's official business. Huh? Yes, you're right. <laughs> All right, what's up? This is, it's a search warrant. <laughs> Some kind of a job? What are you looking for here? Evidence concerning Alan Quatermain's death. Are you out of your mind? You know what you're looking for. Have a look by the bar. Excuse me, Mr. Donnelly. What the hell is going on here, and what are you looking for? A Mexican pottery cup. Would you mind telling me why? All right, this is one of my Mexican tequila cups. I know. Where did you get it? I only, I only missed it the other day when I was looking around. I, where did you find this? In Alan's plane. It had been shattered. I had it put back together again. Oh, come on. One of my tequila cups in Alan's plane? That's ridiculous. Well, I remember it from the night I came around here to tell you what had happened to Alan. Oh, is that right? I do not keep those cups a secret. How many did you find? Seven. Okay, well, there's the eight. We have the whole set. Shall we bag them? Please do. I suppose you're going to uh, confiscate the entire set? Yes, we need them for evidence. I just don't like the implications here, Anna. The pottery cup was used in the course of the crime. Anna Quatermain's crash was not an accident. There was a chemical substance found in the fuel tank, and that is what caused the engine to fail. I think you are wasting your time. Well, I don't think so. You know, I want to know exactly what you were doing on the 24-hour period before Alan had the crash. I also have a search warrant for your warehouse, and I want you to accompany us down there when we leave. Oh, well, what do you expect to find in my warehouse? More tequila cups, a load full of chemicals, or what? We had an anonymous tip that we might find Alan's missing parachute there. Can't you see what is going on here? I am being set up. It is so damned obvious. Well, I don't see it like that. And you are being suckered, lady. Someone is making sure that it looks like I sabotaged Alan's plane and then hit his parachute. Now, I can hardly wait for the next clue to turn up. I have no choice but to place you on the suspect list. Oh, great, 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 great. Who else is on this suspect list? Nobody, just you. Unless, of course, you think that Monica could have done it. This whole thing. You guys hurry up. Yeah, I'm telling you, you are wasting your time here. Please, we want you to cooperate while we're here in your warehouse. Well, why shouldn't I cooperate? I've got nothing to hide, and believe me, you're not going to find any parachutes on these premises. Unless, of course, I'm going to set up. That's a possibility. Yeah. Tell me something. Why didn't uh, Alan use that parachute before the plane went down? We know that he didn't because we found his helmet and his scarf and the wallet near the waterfalls, which indicates to us that he went over the falls to his death. If he had used his parachute, then we would have found some trace of it by now. Now look, Anna, I swear to you, I never laid eyes on that parachute in my life. But if someone made sure that it wasn't on Alan's plane, then that's all the evidence we're going to need to call Alan's death a murder. Yes, that's all we're going to need. Come on. No, no, I was just stretching my legs, that's all, Anna. I want to get some of this fresh air. It's stifling in there, isn't it? There's no reason for you to suffer while we're conducting this session. No, I'm just sorry that uh, Sam and Vince have to suffer all this. Chief, that's all. You shouldn't be long now. 
You're assuming that they're going to find Alma's parachute, huh? Well, I had a tip that I couldn't ignore. Oh, you always put such great faith in anonymous tips. Depends on the tip. I'm afraid that this is going to turn into a dead end. Or at the worst, it will be torn. Tell me something. Did you and Monica ever discuss killing Alma? Was this one uh, another one of your anonymous tips? Because this whole thing is becoming ridiculous. And how dare you even use Monica's name in the same breath with Alan's death? You seem to have forgotten that she was seen by witnesses threatening to kill Alan. Oh, come on. Your witnesses know damn well that those threats were made in the heat of, of, of divorce negotiations. They were both at each other's throats. Well, we'll see, won't we? I'll tell you something. Monica is no killer. She is probably one of the most rational human beings I've ever met in my life. Alan, on the other hand, is much more likely to go off half cocked in the right, or shall I say, wrong direction. You? What about you, Sean? Oh, yeah, what about me? What about me, Anna? I trained you, didn't I? Taught you everything you know? Do you honestly believe I'd be so stupid to use my own property? A piece of Mexican pottery that's highly identifiable to sabotage Alan's plane or to hide his parachute in my warehouse. Do you really think I would do all these things, huh? Yes. You taught me everything I know. But do you honestly think I would be so remiss as to ignore the evidence as it stands? Good. Better take a look, Chief. Is it the same serial number? Matches the one you gave us exactly. Okay. All right, Sean, that's it. Um, then you town. Let's go. for that return to the hospital. Hi, boss. How are you doing? Right? Yeah? Well, uh, I'm worried. So I gather. The surgeon's outside. He's on his way in. You aware of why he's here? Yes. Dr. Stanton said he could go ahead with your surgery. Dr. Stricker? Yeah. Hello. Hi, Mark Trainer. How are you? How do you do? This is Anna Devane. Yes, yes we met. And Jimmy Lee Holt. Jerry Lane, Doctor. Um, I'd like to say I'm as well as can be expected, but I don't know exactly what it is you're expecting. Ah, well, let's examine you first, okay? Then we'll talk. If uh, your friends will excuse me. I'll see you in a minute. Right. Yeah. What is the matter with him? Anna is having cold, cold feet about the operation. But he doesn't have any choice. He has to go through with the surgery, doesn't Look, he? I know that. It's the timing. He feels that if he gets into a hospital, he'll be close to drugs. I don't know. I don't understand why he's worried, but he's strong enough to handle this now. I hope so. Do you think it'll, you know, make things better if I talk to him? I don't know. Anna, how are you doing? I'm fine. No, I mean, how's work? How's the case going? Oh, Jimmy, I don't want to talk about it right now. I've Look at Anna. Day. Alan is my oh. brother. Was my brother? Yeah. Sorry. I shouldn't have cut you off like that. I'm sorry. I'm not having too great of a time of it, you know. My brother's dead, and my best friend is in a deep state of depression. What do you say we put our heads together? Hmm? Do you know anybody that would want Alan dead? You already know what I think. I think that Sean and Monica had the motive to do it. Now look, I know that Sean's a good friend of yours, Anna, but murder is murder. And if my brother's death wasn't an accident, Sean and Monica are number one on my list. Now well, you can go back and finish your visit now. I've finished my examination. Thank you. How's he doing, Doctor? Well, it's all systems go. I want Buzz moved to New York. Why? Why can't you have the operation at General Hospital? Dr. Stanton filled me in on Buzz's fears. I think it'll be beneficial to put him in a different environment. And there's no risk in moving him. Okay, well, then if there's no disadvantage in taking him to New York, I don't see any reason why not. All right, if that's your opinion, I guess it'll be all right. I want what's best for Buzz. Yes, we all do. Okay, okay thank you, Doctor. All right. So Monica was cool, calm, and collected the whole oh, time. Oh, yes. And perfectly willing to talk to me without her lawyer being present. Well, 
that's really opposite to Sean Donnelly, who was very hot under the collar the whole time. Speaking of Donnelly, well, let me amend my statement. You know, she got knocked off her pins when I told her that that pottery cup belonged to Sean. Yeah. Sean was furious, too, when I told him that we found the cup in Alan's plane. Well, you know, Monica pitched the theory that the cup was probably stolen from Sean and planted in Alan's plane. Yeah, that's what Sean said, too. Did he uh, have any other theories about the parachute? Well, he just reiterated the claim that he'd been set up. So where do we go from here? I don't know. I can't let them off the hook. You know, whether it's circumstantial evidence or not. All the evidence points towards Sean, and with Sean, you get Monica. A package. Do you think the package is too neat? I think I'll reserve judgment until I come up with a better theory. How about you? Have you come up with any other angle? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I have. Okay, care to run it by me? Well, it's... It's an avenue we haven't explored yet. Well, let's do that, by all means. What if Alan Quarterman committed suicide? All right, did you see how I got the tumble drive file? Yeah, you typed in laundry. That's right. Now, the only way anyone can see what is on the tumble drive file is to type in the secret access code, which is laundry. That's simple enough. Well, that's the idea. Now, what I want you to do for me, if you can, is to make the entries. Now, to call up the tumble drive file, you have to type in the access code, laundry and tumble drive. And then you type in how much money's been brought in, the date, and where the money's been put for laundering. Have you got it? No problem. Excuse me. Hello, Lavery's office. Yeah, this is he. No, you'll have to talk to my assistant about that. She's not here. Yeah, call back half an hour. Okay. What the hell is going on? All I'm seeing is a bunch of gibberish. Well, you must have hit the wrong key. Now what? Well, you hit the print key. Well, just let it go, and then we'll start at the beginning. Duke, I don't know about this system. Well, it's safer this way, Angel. Only problem is, if anyone ever finds out what's on this tumble drive file, you and I could end up in prison. This is a real mess. You sure you don't want me to take care of the books the old way? We can't risk it. Come in, Tuffy. Now, I asked Tuffy to come over here to help you to learn how to operate the computer. What's the problem? Well, not really having a, a problem, Tuffy. It's just Angel had a little trouble getting into the 20th century. Yeah, well, I just don't trust those things, Come Duke. on, come on. It's just a matter of getting used to it, isn't it? Tuffy is a whiz with computers. He will teach you. Okay, if you say so. Yeah, I do say so. Operation Tumble Drag is into effect today, and everything must run like clockwork. Do you understand? We'll take care of it, boys. Now, I'll be downstairs in the club if you should need me. Oh, and needless to say, I don't want Felicia to see anything of Tumble Dry. You understand that? <laughs> you got it. All right. Show me what you did before. Okay. That's okay, right? That's perfect. All right, then what you do? Okay, then I typed in laundry. Mm -hmm. Then tumble dry. Mm -hmm. All right, then I press this key. No. No, no, no. That's the computer's brain, so to speak, all right? That programs the hard disk, which allows you to give it instructions, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to mess around with that, okay? Okay. That's why you got all that gibberish before. This is the key that you press right there. <laughs> hey, I did it! That's not bad, huh? That's all you have to know. Now you can enter the amounts of money in the one row and the code names in the other. Oh, I'm sorry. It? I didn't know anybody was still here. Oh, no, no, that's all right. Uh, Tuffy was just trying to teach me this thing. I don't know how you handle it all day. Oh, uh, well, it's kind of fun when you get the hang out of it. Yeah. Um, I was hoping I could use Duke's computer because mine's down at the moment. Hey, we're all finished in here, aren't we? We sure are. The monster is yours, Felicia. Thank you very much. Come on, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Yeah. Frisco, how's it going? Good. What's going on here with the truck making deliveries, huh? I thought everything usually came in by boat. Well, usually, but uh, um, 
It's because the uh, harbor is being expanded. You know? So maybe they're uh, cutting down on the traffic in the harbor while they're dredging. Tuffy! Hey! Hey, Ken, how you going? Hey, how you good doing? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. I guess the uh, dock workers don't necessarily like to see these trucks make deliveries, do they? No, nah, that's why I'm here. We got to deal with the truckers. I'm just here to check their out-of-state cards, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was wondering what the treasurer of the union was doing down here checking out the dog workers. Okay, well, now you know. Hold the warehouse here. We'll be right down with the elevator. I'll talk to you later. Hey, yo. How you yeah. doing? Pretty good. How about you? All right. What you, uh, what you loading in here? Or unloading or whatever? Well, I'm not sure. I think it's uh, washers or dryers. Some down the pipes. Oh. Good. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Mr. Lavery's office. Felicia, hi. It's Nina. Oh, hi, Nina. What's up? Oh, I just called to give you the recipe for that dish that we had at Cop's Wife's luncheon the other day. You said you wanted it. Oh, yeah, it was delicious, and you said it was really cheap, didn't you? Definitely. Uh -huh. Do you have time to take it down now? Oh, yeah, sure. Let me find a piece of paper, okay? Okay, shoot. Okay, it's a pound of ground beef, you saute it, and some chopped scallions, two small cans of tomato sauce, a dash of oregano, salt and pepper, some grated cheddar cheese, and also a package of egg noodles. Mm -mm. You got that? <laughs> yeah, I got it, and I think I remember how it was done. Oh, you mix all the meat with all the other stuff, and then, then you let it simmer for a half hour, and you just serve it over the noodles. Great. I'll try it tonight. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Let me know how it comes out, OK? Yeah, I will. And if it comes out OK, I'll have you and Vince over and taste it. A deal. I'll talk to you soon. OK, bye. OK, bye-bye. Tuesday, August 5th, 11.30 AM. Operations changed, new name, Tumble Dry. Tuffy's up to something overseeing delivery of washing machines or dryers. Does it have anything to do with Tumble Dry? Frisco, are you okay? Yeah, babe, I'm fine. You've been in there a long time. You're not sick, are you? No, no, just washing up. What's that smell? I almost burnt the house down. I was trying to light this burner, and I used this paper, and it went up in flames so fast. What kind of paper burns that fast? Oh, it's just computer paper. I got it at Duke's office in the trash. Tumble dry. Honey, what else was on this paper before it burned up here, right up here? Did you see it? Um, huh? Well, I had a, a recipe on there, partial of a recipe. Was there anything else on there? Did, could you read it? No, it was nothing. It was trash. Damn! What's the matter? Honey, wh when did you find this? Trash? Where? What was the trash? What do you mean, I trash? It today. Where? W were you working on something? Is uh, this in something? The office. No, I wasn't working on anything. It's computer paper. Did anybody else use this computer besides you? Computer? Yes. Did anyone else use the computer? Well, Duke, he uses it. And, and Tuffy usually uses it for union business. And um, Angel Moran was trying to learn how to use it today, actually. Damn. I can't believe you tried to light the burner with this paper. What's going What's the matter? What's, what's Nothing. Not, where are you going? I'll be back later. Frisco? Frisco? What, what's going on? If you get any more trouble, you could be suspended for good. Something I can do for you, fella? No. No, I'm just looking around. Well, you're trespassing. You better move along. Oh, yeah. C um, can I ask you a question about this place? It depends on the question. Um, but does this uh, lead to Sean Donnelly's warehouse by any chance? No, it doesn't. Can't you read the sign, ADZ Warehouse? Any other questions? <gasps> no, no, not, not at all. No. ADZ Warehouse. Must be something pretty valuable down there, huh? Who wants to know? Not me. 
Good, then move it, all right? Yeah. Frisco, you still hanging around down here? Yeah, Tom. How you doing? Okay. Uh, so, Tom, why would there be guards around this place? ATZ warehouse? Yeah. I never had guards before. No, I didn't think so. There's a couple of them right there. Yeah. So do me a favor, will you? Yeah, if I can. Keep an eye on this place. Let me know if these guards hang out here, and especially if any more show up. Okay, uh, what's this all about, Frisco? I don't know. Thanks for the help, though. Yeah, no problem. See ya. Oh, uh, I just remembered Damn it. something. What's the matter? Did you lose something? Uh, yeah, uh my little tape recorder. Oh. Left it at home. Yeah. See ya, Tom. Yeah, see ya. And I hope Tiffany's right, because I really am sorry. And that's all I want you to know. I'm so glad you're back. What are you doing? I, I was trying to apologize to you. Where did you get this? What did you do to this? What? Did you rewind this? Yes. Did you record over anything? Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you. I was trying oh, to no! apologize. Oh, no! Felicia, I don't believe you did this. What do I do now? And I hope Tiffany's right, because I really am sorry. And that's all I want you to know. I don't believe this, Felicia. I can't believe this. What? Well, yeah, this is I, evidence I've had built in here now for weeks, and it's always on my tape recorder here. What? Yeah. What are you talking about? Honey, I have been keeping all of my thoughts and suspicions about Tuffy, Stan, Radner, Tessie, the whole works. Everything that's going on down at the waterfront was all right in here, and now it's completely shot. It's gone. You mean I erased it? Well, you, you recorded over it. It's the same thing. Well, I'm sorry. But if you would have told me what was going on, that would never would have happened. I mean, how was I supposed to know that you were making secret clues on that, Frisco? You never tell me anything. Well, listen, honey, don't cry. Frisco, just leave me alone. I never thought you were such a chauvinistic pig. But if I did, I would have never, ever married you in the first place. Never! Felicia. Big macho cop, right? That's what you think. You think you're a big macho cop, and you think I'm just a stupid, dumb little wife. You think, no, don't tell Felicia. I never because... said anything like that. I don't think anything like that at all. Oh, yes, you do. Then why don't you tell me what's going on? Why are you leaving me in the dark? Honey. Don't touch me. I wanted to protect you. That's all. Protect me from what? What are you doing now? Why did you leave here earlier in a, in a complete crazy way? I'm sorry. I'm, I shouldn't have left like that. I'm sorry. You mean that? Yeah, it's not your fault. None of this. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Honest. Oh, Frisco. Okay. This is the last one. Check it. Any problems with the truckers, Tuffy? Everything went off. We're not a hitch, of course. Yeah. It looks like it's all here. Well, if it's all there, that should make a total of, let's see, one million four hundred thousand. Yeah. It's not bad for a first shipment. Yeah, there'll be many more like this. Mr. B wants to launder a shipment like this each week. Do you think we can handle that, Tubby? No problem, boys. Okay. Angel, why don't you enter this in the computer this evening? If you know how, of course. Yeah, I got it now. I think maybe I ought to go with him if it's okay. Fine. That's a good idea. Tumble dry, gentlemen. There's now a full operation. You are not too excited about seeing her, are you? Well, I am. I'm ecstatic, but I, I'm just frightened. I'm worried. I don't know what I'm going to tell about her godfathers. Well, you think of something, Anna. Don't she, worry about it. She's going to be expecting them. What am I going to tell her? That one of them is trying to keep a drug habit, and the other two don't want to speak to me. It'll work out. Believe me. I hope so. First, I've got to get Frisco to talk to me. First things first. Oh, I'm Mr. Hey. Oh, I'm Mr. Welcome back. Hey. 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 Hey.
hug for you. Anna! Oh, and that's how it is. Kids me. joy, yeah? I wouldn't have missed this for the, the whole world, little lady. Uh -huh. Where's everybody else? <laughs> Didn't my godfathers come? I know Frisco came. Hey, that's some good news for me, I hope. What you want to hear? The guards at the ADZ warehouse are gone? Yeah, they were pulled uh, a little while ago. The coast is clear. I know, I'll have to have the hangovers, thank you. Uh, I didn't think you were just uh, mildly curious. Go ahead. Uh, Tom, you can't tell anybody that I'm interested in this warehouse. I won't spill the beans. I can see, you know, what a big deal it is to you. Couldn't be bigger. Come on, Millie. I'm running out of stalling tactics. Well, I'm going to have to tell her about her godfathers. Maybe she's forgotten about them. No, she hasn't. She's just going to come up with a million dollar question in a while, and I'm going to have to have an answer. Well, I've always found out in situations like this that honesty is the only way. Well, I have no intention of lying. I'm just trying to think of a way to soften the blow. Well, I think you better get it over with as soon as possible. The longer you leave it, it's going to get worse, you know. I know. I figured it out. What? Why my godfathers aren't here and why you won't talk about them. Oh, Robin. You're throwing a surprise party for me. And when we get home, everybody will be there, won't they? Can you excuse us for a moment, please? Sure. Come sit down, darling. We're not having a party? No, sweetheart, we're not. Okay. Um, you see, Buzz, it, Buzz is still very sick. Okay? I thought so. I remembered him in my prayers every single night. Good, darling. Is he going to be well? Yes, he's going to get well. He's going to get perfectly well. He's still at the special hospital, you know. May I see him soon? Oh, yes, darling. He's dying to see you. He's missed you terribly. I guess he can't come to our party soon, can he? What time are Sean and Frisco going to be there? There isn't going to be a party. And even if there was, I don't think that Sean and Frisco would attend. Why? Don't they like me anymore? Oh, they love you, darling. It's me that they're not too thrilled with. Why? What did you do to Sean and Frisco? Um, well, since you've been away, I found out that Sean has done something very wrong. Because I'm chief of police, I have to investigate it. And I, I mean, neither of us liked it, but it couldn't be helped. You know, Sean is very angry at me. He thinks that I don't trust him. And Frisco? Well, um, Frisco, I had to suspend him from the police force. Now, I hated doing it, but he left me no choice. So he's angry at you, too? Yes, very. Why do you think Sean did something wrong? And why did you have to suspend Frisco? I thought you said he was going to be a good policeman. Oh, yes, he's going to be a wonderful policeman, darling, but he just has a few lessons that he has to learn. Not like this, Mommy. This just isn't right. It isn't right, Mommy. Uh, Anna? Yes? Do you mind if I go see my cousin Mariangela right away? I am worried about those two little children. They are two little devils, they are. Are you tired after your flight? Oh, not at all. You see, we arrived here with the sh shuttle this morning, but we got to New York last night and we spent the, the night in the hotel. And I am rested. And I don't think that uh, Robin is tired either. Oh, you should see the way she jumped around in the shuttle. <laughs> you tired, was it? I have an idea that I think might just save the day. What is it? Because I'm fresh out of ideas. Well, I can't put it into effect until later, so you bear with me. All right. Robin? How about a visit to the zoo? Okay. Well, you don't sound too happy about it, young lady. I can't be the same without my friends. I miss John and Frisco. 